Well, as the floods in KwaZulu-Natal continue to wreak havoc, more fa focus is being placed on the damage to infrastructure and some of the long-term effects on society and the economy. Flooding erodes roads and bridges. It heightens the risk of structural failures and washouts and also brings with it a range of other adverse impacts. Let's discuss now with Gundo Maswime, who is a civil engineering lecturer at UCT. Gundo, good evening to you, and thank you very much for your time. Very concerning there, hearing from our weather desk, um, the flood warnings for tonight. Uh, but when the waters recede and dry up, it's the only opportunity you have to fully look at it, the scope of the damage to infrastructure. And sometimes it can be breathtaking, because we saw with floods in that region, whole houses in some cases simply being shifted. Why is the Durban region and its surrounds so prone to flood-related disasters? Thank you. The problem of uh, uh, flooding disasters in Durban, they are mostly related to the soil and not just the water itself. Of course, the water is a trigger. Uh, the geology of the area well, has been an interest for geotechnical engineers and geologists alike from the 1930s. And periodically, there would be floods uh, like we are having now. Uh, and a whole lot of studies would be done in the, in the 1950s. Again, there was a lot of work done at uh, UKZN. Um, and then it uh, seems now that it has become uh, more uh, more common every almost every year now. That is what has been happening. So it's the reason is here in the coastal area, uh, which has got a lot of uh, those uh, uh, hilly areas uh, around the bluff. It is comprised of uh, the, the soil called Berea Red uh, soil, which does not really stick together very well, uh, to uh, if I have to simplify it. Uh, and then in some instances, there are layers of clay which would then trap the water. Uh, but this, what we know about the slopes uh, in uh, PZN is that they don't move uh, easily by uh, just water. Uh, it is also exacerbated by failure of some uh, infrastructure, some pipes uh, underground. Uh, that is the main trigger because we don't really see much damage in areas that are not uh, uh, inhabited by people. So that that is uh, one pointer. Uh, and the fact that KZN is not uh, is uh, it's got a tropical uh, climate with a lot of vegetation. So for that reason. The soil holds on quite well, but it is when you have got underground infrastructure uh, that is leaking in many instances. Yeah. They also just, just pause on that point yes, because the next question will just quickly tie into that. You would think yes. that, as you say, you've got studies that are decades in the making. You already understand the topography and the soil composition, all these really important and interesting things that you've told us. They are in the repository of the city planners and engineers. They must be very well versed in what you have just shared. Uh, given the impact of flooding on the infrastructure and then on the environment around it, what is your assessment on how well you think they have planned to mitigate the extent of the disasters we see in the province? Uh, thank you. What we have noticed uh, more recently from uh, government, uh, especially the Council for Built Environment, uh, has been the calling together of all involved parties, uh, because the responsibility sits between different departments. Uh, to say what should the Department of Environmental Affairs be doing, what should be uh, pub what should public works be doing, what should be the, what uh, what affairs doing, and uh, COPTA, that is the custodian of disaster management. Uh, but the actual plans themselves, it's difficult to tell uh, that the knowledge that has been accumulated over the years, uh, it, uh, it has been uh, recorded or stored properly in a usable way by the municipality. So what is important is that there should not be a gap between the uh, academics who have worked on this. Some have moved to Stellenbosch, Professor uh, Felix Ogonta, who, is, who has really uh, put a lot of work on this, has moved to the University of Johannesburg. Uh, but to pull all those people back together so that they, don't, they develop a plan, but that plan must now uh, uh, play into what the uh, municipality is already having uh, in place uh, because I think that is the biggest challenge, the implementation side uh, of uh, the plan. Yeah, and perhaps it'd be a good idea again, I think we have interviewed some of these individuals to bring them back in for a conversation. So areas in KwaZulu-Natal are victim to repeat events and each time, you know, roads are damaged, 
bridges are damaged as well as other key infrastructure and we see that the rehabilitation of this infrastructure is sometimes slow. What concerns do you have for infrastructure that could be most at risk right now? The, the, the problem with infrastructure uh, after these disasters is that you have a disaster like the one we had in 2022. Uh, there has not there has not been um, the, 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 the rebuilding process has not been completed. Uh, it's probably uh, 60 percent done. And uh, four years before that, there was another one uh, caused so much disaster. You see, some of the highways going to the south have not uh, they have not been done yet. So what that means is that infrastructure, in a way, when it's intact, protects other infrastructure. And when it's not fully intact and you have got uh, weather events like the one that is anticipated, it becomes easier for a road that's already exposed, that is already damaged to uh, deteriorate further uh, and fail to protect other infrastructure that would be on, on the way. So that is, that is the main uh, concern right now, that the rebuilding process has been uh, very difficult to do. So I mean, what you're saying is concerning uh, because the risk becomes higher and higher each time an event, a weather event like this happens? Yeah, indeed, the risk gets higher and higher. And what, another thing that we're starting to see uh, is that in many instances, you would go to a municipality, uh, especially the local municipalities, where you will find that the politicians are ready to receive the uh, finances that should uh, be made available when there are disasters like this. Uh, when the technical team does not have the capacity to uh, implement the rebuilding process. So it appears that even at district level, in many instances, we have had uh, engineers coming behind the scenes after meetings to say, uh, I know that the mayor says we are ready, uh, just bring the money, but we are struggling with the normal projects that we are implementing on a day-to-day -day basis. So we will need uh, we need more technical assistance mm. uh, than need the money. So in some instances, even municipalities are not even uh, uh, they are not even able to go and uh, just do a proper report on the extent uh, of damage and cost in property. Wow. Okay. Again, a conversation we must continue, and uh, we certainly will. We have reached out to the government of KwaZulu Natal, so hopefully, Gundo. We'll get some of these uh, answers and interventions that you've been raising in this interview dealt with. Um, again, and we'll show you just a recap. By the way, that was Gundo Maswime, who is a civil engineering lecturer at UCT. Let's show you a little bit more about uh, what the weather desk shared with us a little bit earlier on in terms of what weather we are expecting. And some of the warnings, if you are in these areas um, that have been identified as high risk, um, you've got to take some action. Uh, and I know in previous interviews with government officials, uh, city officials, uh, there have been helplines and warnings uh, and, and ways that communities can be assisted, uh, publicized. So maybe it is an opportune time to begin to look into those. And certainly, you know, for all intents and purposes, there have to be teams on the ground especially in areas that have been adversely affected to make sure that communities are taken, off, taken care of.